Hey class, Miss Anderson here. Today we're going to talk about phase shifts and vertical shifts when graphing trig functions. This is going to be part one of two videos. So in this section, we'll consider equations of the form y equals a sine b x minus c plus d. Um, your trig function here, where it's sine might change. It could be cosine, tangent, cotangent, all six. The a out front is your leading coefficient. For sine and cosine, that is your amplitude or the height of your wave. And then for the other functions, it's just gonna affect whether or not you have a vertical stretch if it, the absolute value of it is bigger than one. It's gonna be a vertical shrink if it's between zero and one. And if you have a negative a value, it's going to be reflected over the x-axis. So those are the properties for a. And remember, amplitude for sine and cosine is absolute value two. So that refers to like the height of the waves for those two. The B value is gonna be out in, in front of the horizontal shift in front of the X here. And that's gonna be um, what determines your period. For sine and cosine, cosecant, secant, it's gonna be two pi divided by B value. For tangent and cotangent, it's pi over B. And that's because of the um, period of those functions. And then you're gonna have x minus c, that's gonna be your phase shift. And in this example, b is factored out, so it's actually just c, that'll be your phase shift. And then d is gonna be your vertical shift. So you've seen functions before where you have like x minus h plus k, and hk is your horizontal and vertical shift. And that's gonna be similar to these problems where C represents your phase shift and it's called a phase shift because you're shifting it a radians do like a radian measure a vertical or a angular distance along the X left or right but it is essentially shifting it horizontally and then the D value is going to be shifting it um, vertically all right so let's try a couple so in this example, we have a leading coefficient of one. So that will be our amplitude. And then we have here, we have BX minus C plus D. So our B value is gonna be in front of this X, which is one. So our period for sine is gonna be two pi over one or just two pi. <clears throat> and that means if we split that into equal force, two pi into equal force means we're gonna be counting by pi over two on our x. And then we have a phase shift right here is gonna be negative pi over two because it is minus here. In order for this to have been positive here, this would have had to been minus. So when you subtract a negative, it makes this positive. So it comes out as opposite. So our phase shift is gonna be negative pi over two, which means we're shifting it left on our, on our graph here. And then we have a vertical shift of positive two. So we're gonna be going left and then we're going to be going up or a shift of negative pi over two, positive two. So first I'm gonna start by labeling my X and Y axis. From McKenna, Kene. So pi over two, pi, three pi over two, two pi, be five pi over two, six pi over two, should be three pi over two. Okay, and then back here we have negative pi over two and negative pi. And then along my y-axis, one, two, three, and maybe a negative one. All right, so I'm gonna do the shift first. I'm gonna use my highlighter. You can use, um, I would just do it as a dashed line or something else, but I like the highlighter feature. So I'm gonna shift it, except for I need to make this smaller. Okay, let's try that. Too small. All right. Okay, so we shifted left pi over two and then a vertical shift of positive two. So when I do this shift, 
I'm gonna consider this my new X, Y axis, and I'm gonna like treat this point as my new origin. So that way I can just finish graphing off just this piece of my function. And as long as I graph it from there, then my shifts, my phase shift and my vertical shift are accounted for. So to graph sine, I'm gonna look at my unit circle and I'm gonna remember that sine is the Y coordinates. So we start at you know, zero degrees or zero radians. We have the point one, zero. And then at pi over two, we have the point zero, one. Pi is the point negative one, zero. And then at three pi over two, it's zero, negative one. And this has a period of two pi. So we're back to two pi. And so none of these values changed. Pi over two, pi, three pi over two because that's our typical period. So we look at our y coordinates. We're gonna start at zero, and then one, zero, negative one, back to zero. And then typically I have an ay column, but since a was one, that means it's going to have the same, like no vertical stretch, no vertical shrink, and no reflection. So I can just use those values for sine. But the trick is, is that you're gonna graph them from your shifted point. So when I start with my first point, I'm gonna graph at zero, then I'm gonna go to one, then at positive pi over two, I'm back to zero, then at pi, I'm going down one from my zero line, and then back to zero here. And so that would be one, cycle of sine that's been shifted to the left one or to the left pi over two and up two. And then you could continue that same pattern after that. If you wanted to graph another cycle or you could continue it over here as well. So we used the Y coordinates to find the values that the function outputted for our given X's. All right, let's try another one. Sorry for the background noise, trying to do this at school. Filling in this um, characteristics and graph for this one. Here we have a leading coefficient of two, so our amplitude is two. We're also going to have a vertical stretch since two is greater than one. And again, we have a B value of one and it's cosine, so our period is gonna be two pi, which means we're gonna be counting by pi over two again. This time we are shifting it to the right pi units and then down one. So we're shifting pi to the right and down one. So we're gonna start by labeling our x axis again. So pi over two is what we're counting by, so pi over two, pi, three pi over two, two pi which means we are going to be using our standard um, to zero to two pi along the unit circle. So we will not have to change our period. So this point is one zero, zero one, negative one zero, zero negative one. Okay, I'm gonna come back to that. Got distracted. Okay, two pi, we're shifting this um, right pi units. So I'm gonna put my pi units to the right, right there. So that's my first, my phase shift. So that's my horizontal shift to the right. And then I'm shifting it down one. So along the y axis, I have to shift it down one. So there's negative one, negative two, negative three, be positive one, positive two. And then I'm gonna shift my graph down one so my new x-axis is gonna be right here. And then I'm gonna treat this point right here as my new origin point, my new zero, zero point. And then I'm gonna get my, so these are gonna be my inputs. So my first x value is gonna be pi, and then three pi over two, then two pi, and I'm gonna to need to continue here since I shifted it. So two pi, still counting by pi over two, is so that'd be, five pi over two would be next. Then six pi over two, which is three pi over, which is three pi. And then seven pi over two, etc. 
Okay, so this time we're doing cosine. So if you're looking at your xy table, I'm kind of skipping my x's because I know I'm starting at pi. But for cosine, I'm looking at the y or the x coordinates along the unit circle. So we're looking at this x coordinate here, 1, 0, negative 1, 0, back to 1. And we're following the pattern counterclockwise like that. So your y values are going 1, 0, negative one, zero, back to one. That's a full rotation to two pi radians around the circle. And then in this case, we have an A value of two that's gonna vertically stretch it. So I'm gonna apply that A value here to this table. So two times one is two, two times zero, two times negative one, two times zero, two times one. And then I'm graphing these starting at my zero, zero point. So my first point is gonna be at pi and then up two. Then I'm gonna go to the next three pi over two and I'm gonna go back to zero, which is gonna be right on that yellow line. So that's my x-axis, my zero line. And then I'm back to negative two, so I'm gonna go down two, it's gonna be at negative three now. My next x point, I'm gonna go back to zero, so right on the line on the shift line, and my next x coordinate, I'm gonna go up two, which is gonna bring me to positive one. And now I've officially graphed one cycle of cosine one time around the unit circle. And then if I wanted to graph more than that, I could continue the pattern, etc. So we could continue that pattern in the reverse direction or in this direction because sine and cosine, or all the trig functions are periodic, so they will repeat after that. All right, we're gonna do a cotangent now. So cotangent is a little bit different, but mostly just with the way it looks and then with the um, period is a little bit different. So first, we have an A value of one, which means it will not have any vertical stretches, vertical shrinks. It does not have an amplitude though, because of the way that it's shaped, it just has an A value. So I'm gonna cross out amplitude. And then I want this to be in the form where you have your function, and then it has to be B X minus C plus D. So, or you have to take C and divide by B to get your phase shift. So essentially your B has to be factored out of your horizontal shift. So I have to rewrite this as cotangent. I'm going to take out the one half and then if I take out the one half, I'm essentially taking the pi over three divided by a half, which is the same thing as multiplying it by two. So it'll be minus two pi over three. And then I have plus two. So now for my period, it's pi over B. Your B value is that one half that you see in front of that parenthesis. So pi over one half is gonna be two pi. Two pi cut into equal force is pi over two again. So that's your X scale. Your phase shift is gonna come from this value right here. So it's gonna be shifted to the right, two pi over three. And then I'm gonna be shifting it up two at the end here. Okay, so the first thing I noticed with this one is that my X scale and my phase shift are not in common denominators, which means that if I count by pi over twos on my X, I am not going to be able to have a nice value for shifting this. And so what you're going to want to do when this happens, when these don't match up nicely, is you wanna first shift your phase shift and then from that phase shift count by pi over twos. So two pi over three is gonna to be to the right of zero. And two thirds is just a little bit bigger than a half anyway. So it's just to the right. We're gonna put our first mark at two pi over three. And then we are gonna shift our graph to the right at that point. Okay. And then we're also going to do a vertical shift of up two. And so we got our shifts. And then from here, we need to do a period of two pi, but we wanna count by pi over twos. The thing is, is that we gotta start at 
2 pi over 3. So my next mark would be like 2 pi over 3 plus pi over 2. So I'm going to need a common denominator here, which is going to be 6. So m multiplying this would be 4 pi over 6, and this one would be 3 pi over 6. So 4 pi over 6 plus 3 pi over 6 is going to be 7 pi over 6. Now I can continue to count by 3 pi over 6, or pi over 2s. So 7 plus 3 is going to be 10 pi over 6, which is going to reduce to 5 pi over 3. And then 10 plus 3 more is going to be 13 pi over 6. And then 3 more is going to be... 16 pi over 6, which is going to be 8 pi over 3. And 16 pi over 6 minus 4 pi over 6 is 12 pi over 6. So right now, this is a full, that's a 2 pi. So that's the full period. So I'm going to go that far for now. So 8 pi over 3. And then I'm going to have to make my um, X, Y axis here for my unit circle. And one thing I need to remember when I'm graphing cotangent is that cotangent is defined as um, X over Y, which means that it's going to be undefined when you have the points 1, 0 and the points negative 1, 0. So those are going to be my asymptote lines, which means at my first and my last point in my rotation, my period, 2 pi, I'm going to have an asymptote. And then I'm going to graph the 45 degree marks in between because cotangent is equal to 1 at positive 45 degrees and cotangent is equal to negative 1 at, in quadrant 2 with the reference angle of 45 degrees. And then I'm also going to use this point here, which is the point 0, 1. So cotangent would be 0 here. So when I make my table, if that is helpful for you, I'm using this unit circle here and my y coordinates in my table. So my x coordinates are going to be these values here. And that would be in your top row if you wanted to fill that in. But I really just care about what my output is so that I can graph it. So I usually skip that step. And I just look at the y values. And so for cotangent, it's y over x. So it's undefined at your first spot. So undefined. Then we move to the 45 degrees and cotangent is 1. And then we go to the 90 and cotangent will be 0. And then we go to negative or quadrant 2 and a 45 degree reference. So cotangent is negative 1 there. And then we go back to our end our period and it would be undefined again. And so it would look like this. At our first mark here, we would have an asymptote. And then we would be at positive 1, which is actually going to be at 3 because it's shifted up 2. Then we're going to 0. Then we're going to negative 1. And then we have an asymptote. And then our curve would follow those asymptotes along here and get infinitely close to those asymptotes, but not cross. And it would make a nice function like that. So that would be one, um, like one function of cotangent. Now, if you'd wanted to do another cycle, you would have a point here at zero, and you would do negative two pi over three, negative seven pi over six, and you would redo it in the reverse. So you would start at one, then zero, then negative one, and then you would know you would have your asymptote. And then you could do another curve for cotangent. Okay, that one was a tricky example, but I threw it on here. Hopefully it made sense, and hopefully this was helpful. There'll be a part two for this video that will have the other functions that I didn't graph in this video.